Life Audio. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. Do you ever feel like you want to know more about the Bible, but that it's kind of hard to understand? Do you want to share your faith with your friends, but have a hard time figuring out how to do that? Do you want to learn how to connect the Bible to your real life? Well, then this is the show for you. My name is Rachel, and I'm your host. I've been a children's pastor for a long time, and one of my favorite things is helping kids learn how to understand the Bible. I think that sometimes people think that the Bible is just for adults, but God actually really wants kids to know about Him. So on this podcast, we're going to learn all about God's big story and how He shows Himself to us through the Bible. As we learn together what the Bible stories actually mean, we can learn how to live out our faith in our everyday life. Life. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. I'm your host, Rachel. Today, I have some great news for you. If you listened to the podcast yesterday, you know that it was a really hard story to hear. It was all about how Jesus took on our sin and the punishment we deserved, and he took that onto the cross for us. Well, today is the second half of the story. And I will tell you that it is my favorite part of the Bible. Let's waste no time and get to reading. I'm reading from Matthew 27, starting at verse 62. It says, The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell people that he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting a guard. On Saturday, so the way that tombs worked in that time frame was it was almost like a cutout that was carved out in the side of a big rock, almost kind of like a cave. And they took a giant, giant boulder rock and they put it in front of the entrance to that cave. So on the Saturday after Jesus died, the priest asked Pilate, who was the Roman governor, to put guards around that grave. Even though they had that big rock, they still wanted guards there. Why do you think they did that? Well, it's because the priests didn't want Jesus's followers to come and steal his body and then lie and tell people that Jesus came back to life. So let's keep reading in Matthew 28 and see what it says. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. did Jesus come back to life? Well, after Jesus died, God brought him back to life. God can do anything. He can even make dead people come back to life. One day when Jesus comes back to earth, he will make our souls go back into our bodies and bring our bodies back to life. Our bodies will be perfect and we will forever live with Jesus and God. Let's keep reading. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say, his disciples came during the night and stole his body away while they were asleep. 
If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. Why did the priests pay the guards to lie about Jesus being alive again? Well, the priests didn't want people to believe in Jesus, and they didn't want people to know he came back to life. So they paid the guards to lie about what happened. But we know the truth. The truth is, is that Jesus was alive. You know, this is what will happen to us. Our bodies eventually will be dead. But when Jesus comes back, he will bring our bodies back to life, just like God brought Jesus's body back to life. Jesus is coming back one day, and he's going to raise everyone who believes in him back to life. Just like God raised Jesus back to life, that's what Easter is about on Easter morning. It is such good news. And even though we started off with hard news yesterday, the good news is that Jesus defeated death. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you for bringing Jesus back to life and for promising to raise us again one day. Help us always to believe in you so that we will be ready when Jesus returns one day. We thank you for the way that we see God work through this gospel message, this good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, friends, we'll talk tomorrow. Hey, friends, thanks for listening to the Hearing Jesus for Kids podcast. If you like today's show, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. That's the number one way you can support this show. If you're wanting to dive a little bit deeper, you can also join our Patreon community to get our family discussion guides, join our private discussion groups, and have access to bonus content and additional resources every month. Hey, I'm praying for you today. Know that you are so loved.